This morning we have an overview of what the Richmond Fire has been looking like and how it has affected the community. Some Muncie firefighters are under investigation. Find out what steps the city and the fire department are taking. Plus, schools throughout Indiana have been struggling since the COVID-19 pandemic, but it's not just the pandemic causing issues. Get the coffee ready and open up those eyes. You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. From Ball State Unified Media, you're waking up with Cardinal Weather, live from the Ball State Weather Center. Good Friday morning to your waking up with Cardinal Weather. I'm Oliver Moster. And I'm Jack Van Meter. We begin this morning with a developing story out of the Muncie Fire Department. According to city officials, the fire department was informed that some of the city's firefighters are under investigation. The firefighters under scrutiny over personal conduct that, quote, occurred without the knowledge or permission of the Muncie Fire Department or the city of Muncie. Officials say the fire department has not received any notice that the department itself is under investigation. Fire Chief Robert Mead immediately instructed all employees to incorporate, or excuse me, cooperate with the investigation. Because this is an ongoing investigation, fire and city officials are declining to comment. This morning, we are still covering the large industrial fire in Richmond, Indiana, which burned for four days straight, but is now out. According to officials, the source of that fire was from two warehouses, which contained a large amount of recycled material. Newslink Indiana's Alex Almanza tells us more. Yeah, as of right now, at least 2,000 residents within the half mile radius of the fire have been evacuated. And as you can see behind me, the smoke still billowing from when the fire first broke out on Tuesday. And uh, local fire officials are saying that this could burn for days longer. This fire is gonna, it's gonna burn for a few days. Burning, recycling materials like plastic, causing massive plumes of smoke over Richmond, Indiana. A plume so large, it was seen from space by this NOAA satellite. And it's one the state fire marshal calls, quote, definitely toxic. These are very fine particles, and if they're breathed in, can cause all kinds of respiratory problems. Burning of the eyes, uh, tightening of the chest, it could uh, aggravate asthma, it could cause bronchitis and all kinds of things. We've also activated our air monitoring uh, uh, assets as well to be sure that we understand what those air quality implications are. And the Environmental Protection Agency has set up a mobile unit of sorts to test for materials like particulates, carbon monoxide, volatile organic compounds, and benzene, just to name a few. While the exact cause is under investigation, city leaders place the blame on the recycling plant's owner. This business owner had previously been cited by our Unsafe Building Commission and given an order to clean up the property. That order was ignored. The mayor says they took that unsafe building order to court, where it was ultimately upheld, and they said that there's been several attempts to force the plant's owner to clean up the property. This person has been negligent and irresponsible, and it's led to putting a lot of people in danger today. <gasps> Those same people now waiting for word on if it's safe to breathe easy in their neighborhoods. We've been on site since the beginning, and we're going to stay there until we can assure that this community uh, is not seeing any threats from the air quality implications here. And the Wayne County Health Department says the N95 mask like the one I'm wearing right now will kind of help filter out some of those airborne particles. Uh, and of course, back in Muncie, an air quality action day has been issued for Delaware County as well as some of the other surrounding counties. And we're actually going to send it over to Anna Chalker, who's uh, talked to some local residents who were impacted by this fire. Alex, we are inside of the radius where that evacuation order was taking place. We're actually on Northwest I Street. We are here where the house behind me. This is a family that had to evacuate to Oak Park Pentecostal Church. They saw the fire outside of their front door yesterday. You can see that it is not really foggy behind me, but on the complete opposite side, you can barely see the road in front of you. Now they say even though they saw how big the fire was, they just couldn't imagine that it was happening there in their neighborhood, and they are just glad everyone around them is safe. I've seen fires before, but not like that one. This is the view the Schneiders had when the industrial fire broke out in their neighborhood. Basically, we're homeless right now. You know, and I've never this. been this close to, you know, being mm -hmm. like that. And it's kind of scary. Now they're at Oak Park Pentecostal Church until they're given the clear to go back home. The American Red Cross is stationed at the church providing help to residents who had to evacuate. Even though there are not a lot of people in the shelter now, their impact is still being felt. I'm very thankful that they have helped us. 
and after leaving with just the clothes on their back and seeing the smoke surround their neighborhood, the Schneiders are preparing for what they will see when they come back home. Hopefully everything is calm and we can continue on with our lives. Now people in this area have either gone to hotels or family and friends to make sure that they can stay in a home that's not in this area or like the Schneider family, they are at a shelter at the church. Now there are some people in this area that have decided to shelter in place inside their homes, but officials are saying that you should get out immediately because of all of the debris still flying and as crews work to fight this fire because there are a lot of chemicals flying around along with the plastic. In Richmond for Alex Almanza, I'm Anna Chalker, Newslink, Indiana. Again, the fire is out now. This is an update we brought you earlier this week. Thank you, Alex and Anna. According to the Associated Press, President Joe Biden spoke with Governor Eric Holcomb earlier this week over the phone about assistance. Biden, quote, offered his support and any additional federal assistance needed to put out the fire. Newslink Indiana will have updates to this story on air and online at BallStateDaily.com. April is National Stress Awareness Month. This resonates with students as finals quickly approaches. Between final exams, unknown futures, and extracurricular activities, students' stress levels can increase toward the end of the academic year. Coping with stress looks different for all individuals. However, the biggest relief, according to students, has been the recent warmer weather. I think like the first really good day was Sunday this past week, and ever since then, you can only see people like on their um, tarps outside or on their hammocks and it's really really nice to see the like typical college life that you always see growing up and I was out like a lot yesterday whenever it started to get nice and so I think it really helps like just because everybody looks like they're in a better mood. I mean I know this works for me but next time you get too stressed enjoy taking some time for yourself outside. Since the end of the coronavirus pandemic, Indiana has found one demand they just can't fill, teachers. This statewide shortage has been in full swing for about two or three years now, and there hasn't been much improvement. Newslink Indiana's Olivia Sloniker gives us a look. There have been a lot of teachers uh, since COVID that just never returned to positions, and it's left a lot of school districts scrambling. But it's not just the virus or school security or even censorship in the classroom. What current and future teachers are really concerned with is salary. I think students who are in college, you know, they look at uh, teacher compensation. And again, I think it's very important that our uh, legislators, they remain uh, steadfast in making sure that teachers are compensated. Compensation, that's the problem. The ongoing teacher shortage is hitting schools hard, and Muncie is no exception. At Northside Middle School alone, there are five positions in need of filling, and even more are needed at other schools, such as Southview and Grissom Elementary. That's why this local school corporation is taking more steps to ensure that their administration is getting exactly what they deserve. Uh, just recently, our school board uh, has approved a, a new program that allows us to provide a $5,000 stipend to any teacher, a certified teacher through the state of Indiana that has been deemed highly effective either in our district or an accompanying school district that wants to come in and teach at one of these two uh, schools in our system that have had some retention problems over the last couple of years. On top of that, Muncie is implementing a referral bonus to teachers in the MCS Corporation. Any staff member that brings in a teacher to work in the district will receive a one-time bonus. And on top of that, they're offering an incentive to bring in more substitute teachers. So what we have done is we have added another program that's been in place since the start of the semester, and that is create positions where if you are a certified teacher or maybe you are a retired teacher, then we are paying $210 a day for those people to come into the classroom, which is quite frankly more than double what a lot of school districts are paying. If the school board approves a measure proposal, Muncie will rank as the highest paying public school in the state. But Muncie Community Schools still have some gaps to fill. Yeah, they're in need of instructional aides, special needs assistants, and interventionalists, among other positions. To apply to any of these positions, you can visit the Muncie Community Schools website. Now, Jack, it has been absolutely beautiful out there. Heavenly this whole week. But I have heard that there might be some uh, rumblings of thunder. This you know, weekend. I have heard that too. Let's send it over to Eric with a look at first weather. Yeah, of course, looking at 
quite a warm, warm day today, although, again, like, the, like Jack did mention, you have potential for seeing probably showers and storms later on today, although there's not to be isolated. You know, even right now, radar, you're seeing some sh a few showers showing up on radar, although those, these showers are very light as, what as compared to what you're seeing right now. But this is all due to the disturbance down to our southeast that's bringing in some, that did bring some moisture to Florida, but, this, but that's tracked its way up towards Indiana today. It's like to bring in maybe a little bit of moisture, although we're not expecting anything like what these slow down in Florida, just some maybe pockets of some showers from time to time. And right now the temperatures are quite mild outside with those temperatures up in the 50s for much of the region, also 60s down to um, around Indianapolis and Terre Haute. So not looking too bad for your Friday morning as outside. Definitely the kind of morning to go out with a sweater, maybe even not even need a sweater as it'll be qu it is quite mild outside right now. And coming up, we're talking about some more summer temperatures continue through the next couple of days along with some rain chances to also return as well with those rain chances, with those, that summer weather, and also some much cooler weather to also return by the time you get to early next week. All of this will be coming up in my full weather forecast. Thank you, Eric. Just ahead, we take a look at what the weather is looking like over the country. But that's after your weather now. Welcome back. This flooding in South Florida is from what might be a once in a millennia rainstorm. Now that's how a National Weather Service meteorologist describes this rare storm in Fort Lauderdale that subsided yesterday morning. The meteorologist said that 14 to 20 inches fell in less than 24 hours, possibly approaching hurricane levels. Some gauges show an even larger total amounts, although it's clear if they're accurate. Right now, Key West holds the state rainfall record for getting 23.28 inches back in 1980. Now, Jack, some keen-eyed viewers might have realized we don't usually sit at this desk. No, we're kind of out of our domain right now. But you, Maddie, you do usually sit at this I desk. I do. I'm usually one of those two chairs. It feels weird being on the outside right now. Well, a little bit of a switcheroo because you are doing national weather today. Absolutely I am, so let's go ahead and get into it. As you guys were just talking about, we've got that rain going on in Florida. We can see this on our radar right here. We've got some pre precipitation up here in the north and then down here in the south. That's gonna be that rain that was going on in Florida that you were just talking about. But also again, that rain and uh, precipitation going up in the Dakotas. Um, we can also see that uh, we've had some nice weather throughout the past week. We talked about it earlier. We've had some gorgeous weather this week and we're gonna go ahead and look at our highs today. Around in Cincinnati at 71, Minneapolis, we've got a high of 81 today, Kansas City around 80. And as we can see up here in the north, it's, it's very, very warm. But down here in Florida, it's only going to hit around 79 degrees in Miami Beach today, 74 in Pensacola. So a little bit colder than we have going on in the Midwest and in the North United States. You can see there's a little bit of a cold front in the northwest. It's going to be around 54 in Seattle, 42 in Billings and in Denver. But it's going to be a little bit warmer in the Las Vegas area, hitting around 73 degrees. Now, looking in at Muncie, we were talking about early in our show about that fire in Richmond, Indiana, and we can see a little bit of the effects of that. This little gray patch right here is going to be an air quality alert for Muncie and Delaware County. We are still seeing some of that pollution because of our dry weather and lack of wind. Um, so just make sure to watch out if you have asthma or any other issues uh, in the future. That should clear up soon, though. We can also see our severe weather outlook today um, in the Midwest. We have a bit of a chance for severe weather, some rain um, up from Minneapolis down to about Oklahoma, Texas area. Um, there's a three out of five chance in uh, Kansas City in the middle of this little patch here. You can see this orange 
here, but we are staying dry in Muncie. We're kind of sandwiched in between these two areas of potential severe weather, but we are staying dry and you know, it's going to stay that way today, but unfortunately, moving into the rest of the week, we can see this potential for severe weather moving into our area here and moving a bit more west. Those kind of two pockets are gonna connect together a bit for potential for severe weather. But the highest severe weather threat is gonna be over here in Arkansas. Arkansas, you can see this orange, this yellow, that is gonna be about a three out of five as well. But moving out further into the Illinois and into um, the eastern United States, we are going to have less of a chance for severe uh, weather, but we are probably going to get some rain over the weekend. So I'll go ahead and throw it back to you guys, Jack and Oliver. Thank you, Madeline. Great job. Uh, now let's take a look at our health news. E-cigarette maker Juul Labs is paying $462 million to six U.S. states and D.C. in the largest multi-state settlement yet for the company, which has been accused of contributing of, to the rising of vaping among youth. In today's Health Minute, Mandy Gaither has more on what it means for the future of vaping in the U.S. A record settlement will now force retailers to secure Juul products behind counters and verify the age of purchasers. The e-cigarette company also has to stop using people under 35 years old in marketing materials targeting young people. This settlement is, is really groundbreaking. Lauren Wold was the lead writer of the American Heart Association scientific statement on the health consequences of youth vaping in 2022. He says the Juul settlement sets a higher standard for all e-cigarette companies when it comes to marketing. Other companies are also out there selling to our youth and addicting our youth to these products which will likely have very devastating consequences for years to come. Research from the CDC and FDA shows more than two and a half million middle and high schoolers in the U.S. used e-cigarettes last year. Wold says we still don't know the long-term effects of vaping on young people, but it can affect lung health, cardiovascular health, and mental health. I'm hopeful that it's going to send a strong message to other companies outside of Juul uh, that these practices will not be tolerated. Jewel says the settlement means the company is nearing total resolution of its historical legal challenges in securing certainty for our future, which now totals more than $1 billion. The company says it can now dedicate even greater focus on our path forward to maximize the value and impact of our product technology and scientific foundation. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. President Biden wants to give DACA recipients access to affordable health care coverage for the first time through Medicaid and the Affordable Care Act insurance marketplace. DACA stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. It's a law that grants temporary legal status to undocumented immigrants who came to the U.S. as children. Biden announced his administration's plan yesterday to propose the rule expanding the definition of who is considered lawfully a resident to, or excuse me, lawfully president to be eligible for Medicaid and the Affordable Care Act insurance marketplace. That, moves, that move by the Department of Health and Human Services would expand access to affordable health insurance to 580,000 DACA recipients. The White House said in a statement they expect to get this done by the end of the month. About 100,000 registered nurses in the U.S. have already left the field due to the stress and burnout caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. That's according to a survey published yesterday by the National Council of State Boards of Nursing. Its researchers analyzed data from nearly 30,000 registered and advanced nurses and more than 24,000 licensed practical or vocational nurses across 45 states. More than a quarter of those surveyed plan to leave the industry or retire in the next five years. More than 60% of the nurses surveyed said their workload increased over the pandemic, and more than half said they felt emotionally drained at work. Almost half of the nurses, mostly those with less than 10 years of experience, said they felt burnt out or fatigued. In just a moment, the Mivia tournament starts tomorrow. We have an update on what you can look forward to next with sports. That's after a message with Mitz.
Welcome back. For the second year in a row, the MEVA Championship runs through Muncie. Our sports team is live outside Worthen Arena to preview Ball State's first round matchup tomorrow night. Thanks, Oliver and Jack. We are live here at Worthen Arena where tomorrow Ball State will take on Quincy for the MEVA Championship here in Worthen Arena for the second season in a row as Ball State has won the MEVA for two years in a row. Now, let's give congratulations to the team. They've been super successful. Go ahead and explain why. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They, they've been so fun to watch. Uh, you know, a great season once again. They started the season losing both games to number two Hawaii, so kind of a rough start, uh, but 18-8. and eight, uh, on the season in total 12 and 2 at home. So with the whole tournament taking place here at Worthen, that is a great sign for the team. They're also 11 and 3 in the conference, so uh, in the MEVA, so you know, love seeing that. Uh, and they're on a 6 game win streak right now, so really hot, but uh, ranked number 8 in the nation. Looking good for this matchup, right? Absolutely. Now let's look at the stat line that kind of goes into how they were so successful this season. They're eighth in the nation in hitting percentage at .331, which is good for first in the MEVA, so they've been very successful there. They're eighth in the nation in blocks per set at 2.36, which is second in the MEVA. Very impressive there as well. Eighth in the nation in kills per set at 12.43. Third in the MEVA, pretty decent as well. And 15th in the nation on assists per set at 11.38, which is good for fourth in the MEVA. However, they're 50th in the nation in aces per set at just under one at .99, which is worst in the MEVA. But let's take a look at the overall matchup between number one Ball State and number eight Quincy. Yeah, so first round matchup, it is one you would expect Ball State to win. Of course, Quincy uh, being the eight seed, they're eight and 18 on the season. Ball State swept the season series, winning three. 0 and 3-1. Absolutely, and we've talked about how Ball State is the 8th rate team in the nation, but Quincy comes in as the 37th team in the nation, so obviously there's a big gap there, and Quincy comes in as the massive underdog, and Quincy's also the 8th seed in the MEVA, and they're the worst in digs, blocks, kills, and assists, but this, let's look at some key players for Ball State that could push them over the top and get them a win in this game. Yeah, well, we can't not talk about Tanashi and Davis Ocheva. He is just such a fun player to watch. The way he plays is unlike anybody I've seen in volleyball. I did a pack on him earlier this week, uh, and uh, you know, I, I talked to him, talked to his coach, and it, it's so fun hearing his side of things. And, and the coach, uh, uh, Donan Cruz, telling uh, telling me that you know, of course, he's a relatively new player to the game. He's from Zimbabwe and ha you know hasn't played volleyball like a lot of the players have, but is still able to put up such great numbers and such eye-popping uh, moves. Absolutely. And I, I like to talk about Caleb Jennings. Caleb Jennings has been one of the namestays for Ball State throughout the course of his college career. He's been with Ball State for now five years now, and he's the reigning MEVA player of the year, and this is his fourth consecutive all MEVA first team uh, spot. And let's talk about some of the statistics that's gotten him these achievements over this year. Uh, he's played 88 sets total, um, awarding himself a tally of 327 kills, 11 successful aces, 138 digs, and 60 one total blocks amounting to a total stat line of 369.5 on the year. Caleb and Tanashi have both been critical for this team top to bottom and Ball State comes into this matchup as the heavy favorite so I'm excited to see what they can do. Yeah well we don't want to get into ahead uh, too much but looking good for this tournament is Ball State but let's send it over to Eric with your local weather. Yeah right now it's, it's gonna be another awesome day for your Friday. It's been warm all week lots of sunshine Summer like weather, and even right now, we're seeing mainly clear skies for our area, although we do have a couple showers in our area. This is also associated with the system down to our southeast that's bringing in some rain showers. And this is also associated with, like I mentioned earlier, that system that did bring some heavy rain to Florida, and that, that is heading our way and bringing us maybe a couple showers for day today, although we're not expecting much in the way of moisture, but just a couple showers from time to time. Looking at those temperatures right now, it's quite mild outside. Temperatures around 60 degrees here in Annapolis, 56 degrees down here in Bloomington, and in our neck of the woods, 56 degrees here in Muncie. So quite nice outside. You might need a little jacket if you're heading outside today today, but not looking like it's gonna be, you're gonna need it for much because by the time you get to the late morning, we're expecting these warmer temperatures to return once again for your day on Friday. Right now, temperatures for nine o'clock, 67 degrees. By noon, the temperatures are around 76 degrees. And by five o'clock, temperatures are around 80 degrees, which should be around our high for day today. We're expecting very warm for your Friday. And sees me warm. Another summer like day. Definitely go out and enjoy that sunshine because it's going to be an awesome day. Although, you notice by 5 o'clock, increasing cloud cover, meaning that we could have some, some cloud cover around, me, and also that chance for a spot shower or storm as well. And for tonight's week, temperatures drop down to a low of 58 degrees. We'll be mostly cloudy tonight. 
a, bit a little breezy, but not too bad for your night tonight. Definitely not to go enjoy the awesome weather once again if you're having evening plans for Friday. And as you check out those rain changes for you, starting out today, looking at those clouds moving in from time to time, all, although we'll saw some showers and storms, mainly to the southwest around Indianapolis. For us, we're going to see maybe a shower or two possible. Again, not expecting much of a washout. So that figure heading out, make sure you have that umbrella with you as we've got some showers around our area by later today. But that Friday night, expecting to, we're taking those um, clouds to decrease. And by tomorrow morning, we're starting the morning off with a little bit of some sunshine. But again, carbon repeat of today, expecting some showers and storms possible by tomorrow afternoon as we're expecting mainly towards um, around Ohio as we're seeing those storms. But we could have a spot storm or two evening Muncie as well. So make sure you're aware of that if you're heading out for your day tomorrow. But by Saturday night into Sunday, we're expecting an increase in rain, in, rain, in rain and storms as we're expecting cloud cover to return by Sunday morning, looking at rain and storms to be likely for area as of cold front approaching, which will bring in the showers and the storms and also some cooler air by the time we get to Sunday evening. And looking at your weekend forecast for you, Saturday looking to be gorgeous, it's lots of sunshine, warm day, but Sunday looking to be a wet and rainy day, showers likely, some storms around from time to time, it'll be a little breezy at time to time, but definitely today did not have plans. But if you are looking to do plants, make sure that Saturday look, looks to be your day for that. And looking at the temperatures as well for the next several days, it's going to be quite a roller coaster. Temperatures going from 80 degrees on Saturday to look at that. It's 43 degrees for a high on Monday, which is much colder compared to this time well, last week as we're taking temperatures to pretty much take a nosedive. So definitely, if you're going to be looking for more, 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 more water, unfortunately, by the time you get to Monday, it will be out of, you'll be out of luck. But, it's, but by the time you get to Wednesday, you have next week, temperatures start to warm up again. Temperatures around average for around Wednesday by the time we get to, um, by, by then. And, and by the time you get, and then we're expecting that to continue for your, even further down the road as you head towards the next week. For this weekend, again, expecting warm temperatures through Saturday and then the rain changes for, for Sunday and then seeing again by Monday, chilly temperatures return as we do take a nose dive back to February like temperatures and then seeing mild temperatures return by like Wednesday and Thursday with temperatures back up to 76 degrees very high next Thursday, meaning we could see another warm spell by the time we get to that time frame. Back to you, Jack. Yeah, absolutely, guys. And it's kind of weird because I am not excited whatsoever for Monday to be, what, back in the 40s again? Oh, it's horrible. I, I, loved, I loved last week. It was beautiful. Oh, yeah. weather Those the lovely time. temperatures last oh, week were outstanding. They were. Thank you very much, Eric. Yeah, Let's take a look at business news. Delta Airlines has reported a record advanced bookings for this summer, despite tickets costing 17% more. It's the latest sign the airline industry is doing well in the aftermath of the pandemic. Like many airlines, the Atlanta-based carrier is under pressure to, due to increases in wages. It's giving workers a 5% raise, even though most of its employees don't have a union to negotiate for them. The cost of putting food on the table is down. Grocery prices fell in March, which is the first decline since September 2020, according to the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. The data shows indexes for fish, eggs, and poultry fell 1.4% from February to March. Bakery items, cereals, and non-alcoholic drinks were among the products that did become more expensive. Although this month-to-month -month decline is a relief for customers, grocery prices are still more expensive on an annual comparison. In just a moment, a new Celine Dion song was released and a new streaming service is out. That's after your weather now. From the heart of Ball State to the heart of your community, NewsLink Indiana brings you local and state news, 
news you care about. We pride ourselves with giving you the most reliable news coverage, stories that affect you, linking you to the community each night on air and online. NewsLink Indiana, bringing news to the heart of your community. Welcome back. There's a new streaming kit on the block. Well, kind of, sort of. It's called Max. At its core, it's a rebranding of the existing HBO Max. Max will offer content from properties including HBO, HGTV, Food Network, Cartoon Network, and TLC. It's scheduled to maintain HBO Max's current price point of $15.99 per month and launches on May 23rd. The service will also offer a cheaper version with ads, however a more expensive version with better sound and Adobe Atmos. Well, uh, that Celine Dion song is also coming out. I think it's May 12th-ish. I'm very yeah, excited. Yeah, something like that. Celine Dion's I'm not the my... biggest fan of Celine Dion. Celine Dion? Celine Dion. Celine Dion. Yeah, I'm not a big big uh, Mustard fan well, personally. She's, but, got yeah. my, she's got my favorite Christmas album. Are you kidding me? No. No, Mariah Carey's got the better Christmas but album. But we are not seeing those Christmas-like temperatures No, here. we're not. Eric, let's no. take a final look at weather. Of course. Well, looking at, again, unseasonably mild temperatures for the next couple days. Gotta get out and enjoy that awesome weather because it won't be lasting for long because by Sunday shower chances return and by Monday next week winter like temperatures unfortunately temperatures are only in four, around 40 degrees for your high on Monday but by the time we get to the middle of next week temperatures will be back in the 70s for your Thursday. That's good we'll be back to like normal temperatures oh, that's yeah. nice. That's well lovely. you know that's all for Cardinal Weather this Friday morning so thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next Friday enjoy the nice weather uh, today and the uh, you know, the rest of the weekend. Fantastic weekend. Yeah.